What's going on guys? It's Judas Gaming here back with another video. And today I have another reaction video on Mr. Nightmare. There's three scary stories of trick or treating. So let's get in the video. Hold up. Alright. So it's on Mr. Nightmare part two of scary trick or treating stories and Furthermore, let's get into it. Four years ago, I took my youngest sister and her two friends trick-or-treating. I'm 18 now. I was obviously 14 during the time of this story, and my youngest sister was only 7 at the time along with her two friends, who, of the two, I'll only name one, Mary, for privacy reasons. I didn't have plans anyway, so I guess I was actually a bit happy that my parents made me walk with them. Plus, I low-key told my sister to fill an extra bag for me at each house. By now, we were more than a mile away from my house. The girls' bags were all pretty full now, and I was ordering them to start making their loop back in the direction of our house. The girls were approaching the front door of a corner house across the street from an old, closed-off community park. The house already stood out from the rest on the block in that there was a three-foot wooden fence surrounding the perimeter, except for the walkway and driveway, and a bunch of overgrown trees and bushes on the front lawn, almost completely blocking the actual house from view. They tried looking for the doorbell, but then called back to me that there wasn't one. I answered back, telling them to just knock on the door. My sister pounded on the door in three different intervals. Then I called for them to skip this house. As the three girls were walking down the stoop, the front door to the house creaked open, and somebody could just barely be seen poking their head out from behind the door which was open just a crack. The girls walked back up the stoop and simultaneously yelled trick or treat. From the sidewalk, all I could see was an arm reach out from around the door, and then the person's pointer finger lifting up as if to say one second. The arm kind of creepily pulled back into the house. My view of it not seeing a body made the situation really eerie. The door closed, and for what felt like 20 seconds, they just stood there on the stoop. I was about to ask them what was going on, but once again, the front door to the house cracked open. Once again, just an arm came into view for me. This time, I could see him waving the girls to come into the house with his hand. That's creepy My right sister there. That's and really, her two really friends creepy. were actually making their way into the house before even looking back at me for approval. At this point, the feeling in my stomach told me something wasn't right here, and I yelled to the girls to come back. Well, someone's waving your the siblings really to go in the house. Was as it's soon obviously as I yelled this, that they're the up there no good. shut the front door, almost slamming it in their faces. This is creepy. The three girls came back over to me. I told them that was enough trick or treating for the night. And the house I is sketchy too. I to continue walking forward, keeping my eyes on the house. Barely through the overgrown bushes in front of the house, I saw the blinds to one of the front windows rustling around, and an older man sitting by the window. Yeah, that's sketchy. That's sketchy. We continued walking home now. The girls told me the man initially said, Hold One up, second right, while right I back. go get the can- Downstairs. Can you just close the door down? Or just close the door, please. Close another door. My door is closed. I All right, just close it. your door. I won't make a mess. Okay. Sorry about that. Had to do something. All right, anyway, let's get back to the video. And then shut the door. When he came back out, he whispered to come inside to get the candy. I was considering calling the cops and reporting this guy, but I wanted to get home and see what my parents had to say first. We were probably halfway down the block when I turned around and saw a person standing by the corner of the block right nope. where the house was. Nope. We made it back to our house where I told my parents. They called my sister's friend's parents, and when they got there, we all had a long conversation about it. 
We then all drove over to the house in separate cars, with my mom talking with the 911 operator in the car. When we got to the house, we learned before the cops even arrived by a neighbor that the house had been vacant for months. Mary's dad was the quickest one to realize what was actually going on here. A sexual predator, or maybe even worse, was hiding in the house for Halloween, waiting to lure unsuspecting That's sneaky, kids very into the sneaky. house to snatch them. That's why on Halloween you never and go to people's houses. what scared me the most to this day was that my sister and her never. friends were about to enter that house before I told them not to. Halloween can be a very dangerous holiday. Not a holiday, but it's dangerous because you don't know people. You're just getting candy from neighbors, but you don't know how they are. That's why you never go to buy a house where you don't know. Or Two let years people ago, in your house who you don't know. For the most part, it was a pretty normal day. Since Halloween was on a Friday, all of my friends were out partying. However, I was doing homework. Not one of my most exciting nights, but I didn't mind too much. I really had to get this homework done anyway. My mom and dad were handing out candy to the trick-or-treaters, as they usually do. My house doesn't usually get many, because we're pretty much the only house on the block that hands out, so it's often ignored because it's not worth their time. Tonight was no exception. Later that night, my mom calls me down and tells me to watch the door for trick-or-treaters because my neighbors had come over asking for help with their costumes for a party. So my neighbors and my parents both went upstairs to work on the costumes, leaving me alone downstairs. It didn't bother me because I had finished my homework and I could just play my PS4 while listening for knocks on the front door, which was close by. Only a couple more trick-or-treaters came in about an hour. Pretty typical for this area. However, around 11 p.m., I heard a knock at the door. That's kind of late for trick-or-treaters to be out. I thought it was pretty weird since it had almost been an hour since the last knock, and it was pretty late for trick-or-treaters to still be out. It is late. Regardless, I grabbed the candy and went to answer the door. It's important to note that there's a small room in between the front door and the living room. When we answer the front door, we make sure to lock the door behind us leading to the living room so our dogs don't run up and start barking and whatnot. I did the same thing here. When I answered the door, there was a surprisingly large man, at least six foot three inches tall with a somewhat muscular physique, standing in front of me wearing a Michael Myers costume. Not a cheap one either, it looked pretty expensive for a costume. He stood in front of me, but didn't say a single word. I thought it was pretty unusual, because it's kind of customary to say trick or treat. But nope, he didn't do a thing but stare at me. That's it weird. was almost like he was a statue. That's I thought he was off. really That's trying off. to sell the character and creep me out, and it was working. Mm -hmm. I was feeling a little intimidated, because I'm pretty small for a guy, only about 5 feet 10 inches tall. I decided to break the off- Hold on. What would you do if you was in that situation? What would you do? There's nothing you can do. Because you might think he's a psychopath, so if you move, he might do something. But what would you do? And as one thing you know, too, before, like, say if someone knocked on my door, right? I'm not going to just open it. I'm going to look to see who it is. I'm going to look to see what it is. If it's too dark out the window, look through the peak hole. And if it's someone who I don't know, I'm not going to open it for you. I'm going to call my parents. And say someone's at the door. Or if I'm home alone, call my dad and tell him. But if my parents are home, most likely they're going to be home. Because it's, you know, nighttime. I'm going to you know, say, yeah, I'm going to call my parents and say someone's at the door. Then they're going to go and answer the door and see what they want. I'm not going to just open the door for no one. I don't do that. So what would you do if you was in that situation? What would you do? Awkward silence and say trick or treat for him while handing him some candy. I couldn't believe what he did next. In response to me handing him candy, he took a few steps into my house. You shot this people was not. when I started getting really uncomfortable. You're supposed to take the candy, say thank you, and go. Yeah, you're supposed to It's like to an do unspoken that. rule that you don't walk into people's houses without permission. No, you don't do that. It was at that. this moment that I also noticed that he didn't have any type of bag for candy. It's a red flag. This was a huge red flag, because I realized then that he was not there to trick or treat. Before I could respond, Probably the man reached scare. into his pocket and pulled something out. I didn't want to look at it, but I was assuming it was a weapon, and I had no idea what to do. I would locked myself into a small room with a psychopath much larger than me holding a weapon, blocking the only exits. We all like to pretend and make up scenarios in our heads where we have to be the hero and save the day. But here I was, stuck in a real-life situation, completely unable to move, not able to save myself. I was frozen in fear. It was such a weird feeling, almost like I was dreaming the entire thing. I had no control over my body. 
Now, what a cliche way of dying I thought it would be, getting stabbed to death by someone dressed up as Michael Myers on Halloween. That's messed up. Thankfully, it didn't go like that, because without warning, the guy takes off his mask and jokingly says, I'm just messing with you, bro. <laughs> I'm just still frozen in shock and can't respond in any way. He then says, I scared you though, right? Completely confused and still afraid, I managed to respond with, Yeah, you got me. He put the knife back in his pocket, which gave me a huge sign of relief, and said, I didn't really come here to trick or treat, but can I have that candy anyway? I'm really hungry. So what I you didn't came hesitate for? to give him the candy because he creeped me out, and he still did have a knife. He then goes on to mention how he just left his friend's Halloween party, and he saw my lights on and decided to prank me. It was obvious that he was drunk and high and thought knocking on someone's house pretending to be Michael Myers qualifies as a good prank. He mentions how he owns a tattoo Kinda place was, about an hour away from here, too. and even says that I'm pretty chill and that we should hang out sometime. He tells me to put his name and number in my phone so we can chill Trying soon. To prank him. I make sure to take his name and number down. I, go, I went a little After bit all, too far. To say if it wasn't him, say if it was a crazy psychopath. I basically it's agreed weird. to everything he said because I was still terrified and just wanted the conversation to end as soon as possible. I would be. I would but be this terrified. This conversation seemed to go on for hours. Despite this, I still didn't feel comfortable or safe. I had to find a way to get this guy out of my house. There was something way off about him and I got vibes that he was a dangerous person. So I decided to make up a bullshit lie and say that I had something cooking in the oven that I needed to check on and that I Smart. texted him later. And it worked. Smart. He said okay and turned around to leave my house. I could not close and lock the door quick enough when he left. My heart was still beating so fast that I thought it was going to burst from my chest. That was easily the most terrifying and weirdest experience of my life. I decided to not contact the police though since the guy didn't have any malicious intent. I guess he was just completely out of it and just a overall really creepy person. I still have his number to this day, but we've never texted or called each other. So why the heck do you have his like number then? As terrifying as that situation was, I can laugh at it now and use it as an interesting story to share with my friends. So I guess one good thing did come from it. Just be careful who you open your door for on Halloween. Mm -hmm. There's some very weird and messed up people out there. Sure I got is. lucky this guy wasn't sure a complete is. psychopath because nothing was stopping him from stabbing me. That's crazy. Halloween used to be my favorite holiday, but ever since one not-so-sweet round of trick-or-treating, I've kind of switched over to liking Christmas the most. I like Christmas, too. 2006, you do a lot of stuff. It's old. nice. It's Me and Johnny, my best cool. friend at the time, were going trick-or-treating together. It's a I big neighborhood. It was a, a lot of trees. Night, so everyone had school the next day. That meant the craziness with the teenagers going around with TP and shaving cream wasn't as extreme. Pranks. Nor was anything, really. My parents wanted me back by 11 o'clock the latest, same with Johnny. It was around 8.30, I would constantly check my wristwatch. We were down a bunch of blocks close to the woods and the highway by the east end of town. This would likely be our last year of trick-or-treating, so we were trying to get as much candy as possible. We rang doorbell after doorbell. As the night wore on and the amount of kids outside lessened, the number of people answering their doors also decreased. Then it started to drizzle, and that's when it really became a ghost town outside. But that didn't stop us. We were now three houses down from the house that was commonly known around there as Hell House. It was nicknamed this because of the alleged murder that happened inside decades ago. Plus the fact that the house looked like it was built over a hundred years ago and it stuck does. out from the other houses two miles away. It does. There was even a whole webpage dedicated to the house with a little lore behind it. I don't really remember the full details anymore. The website is down now, but at the time, nobody seemed to know if anybody lived there or not. At the time, I was sure the neighbors knew, but we didn't live very close to the house. Long story short, me and Johnny were feeling brave and cocky, so we hopped the creepy fence surrounding the seemingly abandoned property and walked up to the stoop, which was made out of ancient and worn-out-looking red bricks. We knocked on the door a few times, since there was no doorbell. The drizzle turned to rain, and we suddenly didn't want to move out from under the front awning. Johnny jokingly knocked on the door again, but my focus was shifted to walking home in this rain. Suddenly, a loud thud made us both jump. Johnny said it sounded like it came from a window upstairs, to which I replied, let's leave. 
We Smart walked quickly move. back down the red brick pathway, hopped over the front black graveyard-like gate, and stopped to look back at the house on this dark, rainy Halloween night. Johnny bumped me on the shoulder and pointed to the upper middle window of the house, and I felt like my heart dropped from my chest when I saw somebody clear as day staring down at us. Oh no. Oh no. Was Swear it. so disturbing nope. about this person's face. I couldn't tell what it was through the rain and foggy window. Look like a man. I swear that face and just this whole scene seemed like something you would see in a horror movie. We both jumped once again when the person at the window quickly and aggressively turned and seemingly ran away from the window. All we could assume was that they were coming outside after us. We quickly went to hide by the neighbor's fence, which was facing the backyard of the house. The sound of the rain thankfully masked the sound of our breathing and whispering. This neighboring fence was made of wood and had a bunch of holes, allowing us to peek through to the lawn next door. Suddenly, the entire fence started to shake a little, yet we couldn't see anyone on the other side. We were certain it wasn't us who had done it. Johnny and I agreed it was time to make a run for it back to my house. We both stood up, and when we turned to run, I saw something at the edge of the fence. At first, I was confused as to what it was due to the darkness, but it soon hit me that this was a person leaning over to this side of That's the really fence, weird. exposing their body down to their waistline. If someone doing that to me, I would have been. I wouldn't just the stood there and hide. The I would have been down the road, going towards my house. I would. I wouldn't stay there. If I seen someone standing from the upstairs window, looking at us, and ran away from the window, and we think they're going down here to come and get us, no, and they looked at me a certain kind of way, I'll be going. I wouldn't stay at the house. That's crazy. The really scary part is the next day after school, we went to go ask some of the neighbors over there if they knew who lived there, and they all gave the same response. They had no idea if anybody lived there or not. They never so saw no a car in the there? driveway or anybody yeah, no outside. One, there. one of the neighbors even pointed out that the house had a for sale sign very briefly a few months prior, but we disappeared try to hide in there and do some sneaky stuff. We told all of the neighbors to our story, oh, that's they what were all very disturbed by the news. I moved out of that neighborhood in 2007 the next year, and I've never had to worry about the story behind that house or who was living there since. All I know is something strange was going on inside of that house, and I kind of wish I found out what. That is one of the reasons why you don't trust everybody. You just can't. You can't trust everybody. I'm just saying on Halloween, you don't go in their house. You say trick or treat. They give you the candy and you go. That's all. You don't say, you don't let them say, well, my candy's in the house real quick. I'll be right back. And then next time when they come back, here, come here, come here real quick. No. That's fishy. That's airy. That's sketchy. You don't do that. You really don't do that. Or you go to a house and you knocked on the door and no one's there and then you hopped over the fence or go through the gate onto the sidewalk and then you look back at the house and see someone upstairs of the house looking down at you like that and run away from the window to come and get you. No, you don't hide there and say, oh, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. You be going. You tell your friend, come on, let's go. Running down the road. Run somewhere. Tell your parents. I would have been told my parents to call the cops. Right, it was someone trying to lure your sisters inside the house. Nope, you never go inside the house. You're supposed to say trick or treat, get your candy, and go. Or if someone, or you're opening the door, someone they just standing there not saying a word. Uh uh, that's why I never open my door for nobody. I tell my parents first. Anyway, I hope you guys like the reaction video. I'll be coming up with more reaction videos, um, vlogs, and gaming videos. Um, my gaming video is going to be coming up shortly, or probably in three days or so. My vlogs and skits also. My vlogs after that. But the gaming video is coming up shortly. Um, check out the channels Ed the Gamer Reacts, Ed the Gamer, and Chris the Heat Fan. Excuse me. Also, I'll be having a reaction series where I make a, lot, a ton of reaction videos. So stay tuned. You know, I want to switch up. I don't want to keep making gaming and reactions. But um, I'm running out of time on my video. My video time is about 5 to 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Because that's what I think I'm recording up to. So if you guys have any comments or questions, say it down in the comments below. If you guys like this video, um, push that like button and comment on my video. My like goals is about 10, 10 likes or 5 likes. Obviously 5 likes or 10 likes. And check out my Instagram page. 
Facebook, and Snapchat. So I'll see you guys next time. The next video is going to be a gaming video, and then a vlog, and then a reaction. Peace.